Hello and welcome to the Amplifier Podcast, the show where the best in business discuss how you can grow your business best. I'm Wyatt McPherson, I produce this show, and this week our host Don Cooper is speaking with Susan Gilbert for her first of three episodes with us. Susan is a best-selling author, a top 100 marketing influencer, and someone who loves to help entrepreneurs create foundational material in the form of major market books. Don and Susan discussed business leaders achieving a higher purpose, why entrepreneurs should write books, and how all of this can help bring you and your business to newer and greater levels. It is an amazing conversation, so make sure you check out our other two episodes with Susan and subscribe so you don't miss any in the future. With all of that said, though, I truly do hope that you enjoy this episode of the Amplifier Podcast. I spent a couple hours this morning watching all of your videos, and you know it never ceases to amaze me when I dive in and, and listen and read what my fellow entrepreneurs do, that I get inspired. I've got, I've got these... Um, rocket book sort of enabled whiteboards behind me and it's where I kind of write quotes and notes that I can yes. capture and take a snap of and use use the rocket book app to go off and put it where I needed to put it to remember and the one thing that I heard on one of your videos the introduction of your your destiny video was that sometimes an entrepreneur will find themselves having climb up climbing up a mountain only to realize that they're not happy. They're not satisfied. The mountain has not changed. You have that, that one really, it was almost tingly for me. Like someone had rung a bell and it was vibrating in me when I heard that. That is, that was written and created to speak to my avatar. Mm -hmm. That is most of my clients are men. Mm -hmm. They're very successful and they've either reached as far as they want to go in that particular realm of expertise and they're bored right. and they don't know what to do with themselves or they want to take it to another level. And right. so that's why I call myself a reinvention coach. Cause I really do work with people. Um, somebody called me the other day, the author whisper, because oh. ultimately it ultimately it ends up being about a book. Right. Very rarely do I work with somebody that we don't end up doing the creative process of taking the work that we've done and getting them to put it down onto paper. Um, but I'm not like an Alinka. I'm not. Mm-hmm. It, this isn't just about a book. I, yeah, I, I think it's um, as I was sort of doing my homework for our conversation. Of, of course, we've talked before, but I kind of dove in this morning. And the word that caught my attention, which was different than some of our other colleagues who help entrepreneurs write books, was a foundational book that separates them from the noise. That foundational book, it's almost, yes. it almost feels existential. Yes. Well, it is. It's kind of like since you're in construction, and we can certainly talk about this you know, on the podcast if it's of interest, but when you think about building a house... You don't Mm -hmm. just go to Home Depot and buy some lumber and some nails. You have a plan. Mm -hmm. You build the foundation and then you build from there. And if you try to just nail things together without the foundation, it's going to crumble. So, um, so yeah, that's the basis usually of creating that foundational message. In fact, the man who is in that video that you watch, the destined for more, um, he was somebody who was and is still highly successful with as a real estate owner, as in apartment buildings and high end properties. And that's how he has created his wealth, but he's not involved in it. You know, the property managers take care of everything for the most part and his accountant, and he was bored. And so I created his brand, which is called Flying Through Life. Mm-hmm. Then we did a book, his first book was Flying Through Life. Second book was Zen Pilot, and we're working on the third one, which is now Peace Pilot. But we built that foundation that supports all these other things that he's mm-hmm. doing. Love it, uh, you know. Uh, and and you 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 jumped on his plane and were in Africa with him. I became a pilot first when I lived in San Diego, mm-hmm. and as a new time pilot, and I immediately bought a Cessna one hundred and eighty two. Mm-hmm. There weren't a lot of people that would fly with me. You know, she's a woman, she's low time. I don't want to be in that puddle jumper. You know, I don't trust her or the the plane. But I had coached this particular person um, in the video to leave corporate America 
and start this foundational business that he has that he's made all this money from. Mm -hmm. So he would go with me. We'd fly to Palm Springs. We'd fly over to Catalina Island. And he got the bug then, but he was still in that building process of his business. Mm -hmm. And once he got it where he wanted it to be and had all his management in place, he started to learn to fly. But I mean, he did it full time. And he went from single engine to, you know, twin to multi engine to commercial license, you know, the whole nine yards and has never looked back. And so that's when he actually flew up here and we did a VIP weekend together. And I said, you are in love with flying. And he's become a thought leader in just about, I mean, he's been a thought leader for about three years, but everybody in aviation knows him. But we saw that you take this passion, you take this love, and that's the foundation. Right. Create the brand, flying through life, write the book, flying through life. And then he was, he's just been off and running. So what he did is he flew me over to Africa. And then we flew from uh, South Africa. Uh, we flew out of Durban and we flew to Mauritius, which is an island east of Madagascar. Okay. And then from Mauritius to Madagascar and then Madagascar to Kenya and then up to Ethiopia. So I was with him for a month. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it uh, was very I, cool. I picked up on something you said in that video that uh, this particular mission that he was on was pole to pole. So uh, where, where did he start and where did he finish? Yeah, the, it was a, he did a circumnavigation, which is basically around the globe, mm -hmm. which is the result of the, the book Zen Pilot. And he did that about four years ago. And okay. then he set the next one to be pole to pole, meaning he left San Diego and flew down to Antarctica. Mm -hmm. flew like a big loop around Antarctica and came back up the, um, let's see, that would be the eastern coast of South, uh, South America, mm -hmm. over to Africa, down to the southern tip of the continent of Africa, which is where we met up. And then he came up and through Europe, got stuck in Europe during COVID for a period of time, and then got freed up and went up over the North Pole came down through Alaska, came through Seattle, did a stop here, and then returned back to San Diego. And he had a documentary team that was, we, we planned all it out that he would have a documentary team and he'd flown me over to make sure that we were on message. Right. And he was concerned that the, the documentary team was making it more like a travel excerpt rather than on mission for this, because what he was doing, he, he, he and I determined, and this is all such a long story, but we determined that he wanted a mission based. I have a website called Messengers on a Mission. Yes, I wrote a note about that. Okay. And he is, um, he, he wanted to create a mission that he could get the world behind because he'd learned on that circumnavigation as he talked with people that people were more alike than they were different. And he mm -hmm. came back talking about being a citizen of the world. So he named his second plane, this twin commander that he, cause he couldn't have done that, uh, the, this particular flight in the original plane, which was called Spirit of San Diego. But we determined that the only two places on the planet that have not had a war is the North Pole and the South Pole. Right. So that began, be, began the message It's the pole to pole flight. And he got all the sponsorship. He got, you know, all the, planning in place and all the you just can't imagine the technical aspects of what it took here to take all of the internal parts of the plane out and put in I mean he was actually a flying bomb you can see it in the video where mm -hmm. you where we're dancing you know but you can see that it's all fuel tanks right. and behind us and everything had to be outfitted then you go through the bureau bureaucratic process of can you fly in and he of course in um colombia they think he's flying contraband of something i was gonna i was gonna say <laughs> you know like opiates you know and, and stuff yeah. that, you know and so yeah. it's just amazing everything that you went through and he kind of he ended the trip pretty much feeling like almost like a ptsd for everything because he just kept getting hit with one thing after another after another after another when i hear you talking about like you introduced him to flying yes. and then he became passionate about it. 
so passionate that you helped him redefine his existence around this new purpose about flying as this, you know, as this message. And then the book became the foundation for this mission. It's interesting because often we hear about people who want to write a book to support their existing business. This is deeper. It's way deeper. And I'm so glad that you see that, Don, because when I've gone into breakout sessions in the Genius Network, I babble. And it's like I'm having a really hard time telling people what I do in, you know, one sentence or, or less, because it is different. In the um, book, Flying Through Life, he dedicated the book to me mm -hmm. and said that I had introduced him to the three passions of his life, small business, spirituality, and flying. There's another man who's very well known in the direct response world. If I, well, I, I don't have a problem. It's Rick Ciceri, and he's mm -hmm. known for having the most successful info, infomercial of all time. He, he, he did the George Foreman grill. He's done Sonic Care, GoPro. He is the man behind all of that. Those are some big brands. A big, big brands. And when he reached out to me, because he happened to live in Seattle, um, he just lives, he's almost a stone's throw away from me now. He moved. He reached out to me from LinkedIn. And I was like, why does Rick Ciceri need me? The man who has supported all these brands. Mm -hmm. And we got together. And what we found is, but he didn't have his own brand. He was an uh -huh. agency that took care of other brands. And now the, it, now the world has shifted where not that there aren't some infomercials, but the brands are doing videos in-house. Now video, they can create their own media. He was, the man with, he was the man with no brand. Well, he was the man with no brand. And so what we, and it was also um, because he was also questioning, he was at, at that pivotal point in his life where like, do I just retire or can I, can I still keep working? And what does that look like? So we took the foundational skills that he's been using for years to create these big brands or promote these big brands using video. And his platform is using is video marketing. And we wrote a book called Video Persuasion. And in the book, Video Persuasion, it's all the stuff that he used in all these great infomercials. Right. And it, it like created, it put a new um, boost to his business with mm -hmm. this book. Um, he's actually, I'm doing a, a group coaching program right now. And he's in the group coaching, writing another book. And I said, Rick, why do you need to come into the group coaching? We've already done this because he was in a one-year program with me. Mm -hmm. You've already done this. He said, yeah, but I need the accountability and I love your ideas and the, the creativity that comes. So yeah, my work has a lot of creativity to mm -hmm. it. And um, emo well, also there's a download at Miss Messengers on a Mission. I don't know if you opted into that or not, but it's a parable. Mm -hmm. And I wrote the parable specifically to speak to this man that we're discussing, right? the avatar. And I've had so many people say, okay, I'll download it. And then they start to read it and they think, well, this is a children's story, but they hang in there. And mm -hmm. at a certain point, it kicks in. The message of the parable kicks in and they really get into it because it's about a pilot who was happy with his life. He was able to support his family, but he became a pilot because his father had been a pilot. And then a couple of things triggered him where he began to question, if I weren't a pilot, what would I do? What would my purpose be? How would I give back? Mm -hmm. And I won't give away the rest of it. Um, but that is that is really what I do. And, and the book often comes from it, right. but that's not the starting point. Some people contact me and say, I heard the work you did with so-and-so, and, -so, and can you help me write a book? Sure, because I get most of my work from referral. Right. But my very best work is what we're talking about right now, where I can really, and it feels good to me, because I help somebody do, a, like a, it's like going on an adventure with them of self-discovery and something that maybe they didn't even know that they had inside themselves, like Rick. You know, like he knew the work that he'd been doing, but he didn't know how to elevate it mm -hmm. to a new, to the way the digital world is today. Well, I, I could tell you just as you describe that process, 
I can, I, I'm not ready yet because I've got some other small stuff to do or not, not small stuff, but a different format, but you and I are going to do one of my books um, because um, I've got two other books in my head that I want to do as major market books, as opposed to the smaller sort of uh, informational like uh, lead gen you know there's yeah, well they're lead gen books they're they're really to kind of help people ask you know answer the question of how i can help um and so i've done four of those and i've got about four more that i'm doing this year some of them are going to be collaborations but my you know my my bigger thing is i've got a couple of books in my head that are really about sharing um sharing some some broader foundational inspirations that I, about how I want to help a couple of different people, a different, different avatars um, yes. that are not, that are, that are just because I want to share and because I'm passionate about, uh, about them. So, and I, I, and I, 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 you know, we've got other people in our networks who help with some big books, but they're really just about a book. And, and what I was sort of toiling with is when I'm ready to do a, a big book, I really want it to start off with something deeper than that. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, we reach a certain point in our careers where we don't necessarily need any more money. It's mm -hmm. nice if the money comes, but we're satisfied with what we're doing. And yet, why am I here? What, what else can I give? What else? And, and money follows that. It always does because, you know, the energy follows the money. Or yeah. the money follows the energy is the better way to put that. But it's the idea that when you go out with the mission of wanting to serve, yes. wanting to give back, wanting to leave a legacy, like a, a lot of this is legacy building also. Mm -hmm. um, I was about to work with a man before COVID hit last year, and we're back in discussion right now, but he is um, very well known. He, he's an icon in the aviation industry. And we came in contact with each other through the other client. He owns gold mines in uh, Alaska. I mean, he's done so many firsts in aviation. Um, and we were going to do a legacy book for him. And that in him, he's 84 years old. And he was going to fly over Antarctica again. But there was no fuel that was coming in up there, right. which completely stopped things and it was COVID based. So now that things are starting to open back up again, we're back and the same documentary team that was working with um, Robert De Laurentiis will do a, just a much, much smaller. So we have a project that will launch at some point, but for him, it's a legacy piece mm -hmm. to share all the things that he's done as an inspiration to those who will follow. For entrepreneurs who want to create a cause who want to who want to understand and reinvigorate their purpose and share that and go and 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 as i started in the beginning of this podcast saying you know the mountain hasn't changed but you have yeah. and redefine it that to me defines something way bigger than i want to write a mark major market book as opposed to a lead gen book it's to me that that process of doing that with you is therapy to redefine your purpose for the next stage of your life. Exactly. And you know, when you define like lead gen versus major book, the interesting thing is for the client, Robert De Laurentiis, that we've been discussing, his first book, Flying Through Life, is really kind of a skinny little book. It is, um, I think, 175 pages. Right. Now, Zen Pilot is much more robust uh, because it's all about that circumnavigation. But the message is still in Zen Pilot, and the sure. message will still be in Peace Pilot. And there is a trend right now in the industry, in the book industry, that people are wanting to read books that are like 150 pages yeah. because we are so busy. And, you know, they don't have to be the other than fiction, which is like historical fiction. They're always like 500 pages long. But, um, but for business, it's like, or a mission just to get clear it's mm -hmm. the clarity yeah. to get the clarity of what is this and make it unique which is the standing out point because there is no other flying through life you know there is no other person like rick Ciceri. so it's getting to the core of the essence of the person and the and the purpose as you mentioned and then building something from there 
and being able to tell other people and share it with the vehicle of a book. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. And there you have it. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening to this episode of the Amplifier Podcast. If you would like to get in touch with Don or Susan and discover more of what both of them can do for you, then you can always find both of their links in the description of this episode. We did three episodes in total with Susan, so definitely make sure you go and check out the other two. And make sure you leave a five-star rating. It truly does help us out a lot. And be sure to subscribe so you never miss any future episodes. With all of that said, though, I truly do hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Amplifier Podcast, and we shall see you next time.